This week on a special edition of Our World with Black Enterprise, we're on location in Chicago at the 17th annual Black Enterprise Entrepreneurs Conference. Coming up, he's been a pillar in the African-American community for more than half a century, and he's still going strong. I sit down with the Reverend Jesse Jackson. Plus, a panel of Republicans we refuses to panel of experts from the right wing. When you look at the number one thing that he's going to be measured by, it's this economy, and that is where he gets a failing mark. Welcome back to Our World with Black Enterprise. The 2012 presidential elections are right around the corner. We sit down with a panel of Republicans who cast their ballot on how it'll play out. Joining me are Lenny McAllister, senior contributor to Politic 365, Marsha White, who's a project manager and senior consultant, and Gary Rogier, senior vice president of Ariel Investments. Thank you all so much for being here. Lenny, I'm going to start with you. This is an interesting moment. Uh, it's not official yet, but Mitt Romney is, for all intents and purposes, the Republican nominee for president. How does that make you feel? How, how, how do you think about that nomination? You know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a mix because Romney wasn't necessarily saying the types of things that African-American Republicans really liked during the primary process. If you look at some of the things that Newt Gingrich said or Rick Santorum, they, they stepped in some holes there, but they also tried to at least address some of the issues that African-American voters needed to have addressed in regards to schools, in regards to jobs and the like. What are the, the things that Republican voters, and particularly black Republican voters, Want. What are the issues that matter to you all, and, and what kind of stance do you want your, your, your president to take on? Well, you know, what I'd like to see more out of, out of, out of Mitt Romney, particularly for the, for the black community, is, you know, he's got an incredible professional background that I think some have looked at negatively. He's got to play that up. He's a great operator. He's proven to be a great operator. And I think where we are fiscally, where we are with jobs and the economy, he needs to come out and say, well, this is what I've done that works. This is why I'm a good operator. People need to hear that because it filters down to jobs which African Americans care about. So when you all look at the the sweep of President Obama's accomplishments. Universal health care, when we look at HIV AIDS domestically, it's been an incredibly ambitious and successful agenda. Uh, whether or not you agree with it, he, he handled Don't Ask, Don't Tell in, in, in the military. When you look at foreign policy, you see uh, Osama bin Laden was killed under President Obama, not under President Bush. Uh, if you happen to agree with the execution of uh, Gaddafi in Libya, you saw that under Obama, not Bush. You see the withdrawal of troops in Iraq under Obama, not Bush. Right? You begin to see a dial down in Afghanistan under Obama, not Bush. So it seems to me that even if you don't agree with all of his policies, it, it's sort of difficult for me to imagine that this wasn't a successful presidency. Well, what's success? I mean, you can go to school and you get 59% on a test, you still fail. You're a professor, you know that. You need to get above a certain mark. And that number one mark when it comes to America over these last four years was supposed to be the economy. We have the lowest amount of workforce participation since the 1980s. Unemployment is going down because people are jumping out of the workforce. That's not an encouraging sign. And now we're talking about another recession on the horizon. That's going to be the marker that he's going to be measured by. So although there have been successes, don't ask to don't tell, I do believe, was a good mark for him to put into place. I concur with that. But when you look at the number one thing that he's going to be measured by, it's this economy, and that is where he gets a failing mark. And as an African-American woman who is out on her own, and I have gone through two years of unemployment, mm -hmm. I really wanted to see someone who's going to be doing something to help with jobs for women, for men, get those jobs out there. And the way the policies are right now with the Obama administration, they're not helping. They're really hurting. To answer your question, I think that if, if for those that have voted for him, I think he did a lot of things he said he would do. Now, as a Republican, I just purely disagree with a lot of his stance. But I think he actually ran and did what he what he said he was going to do for a lot of folks. Again, I just think it's... Ah, so you disagree with Lenny on this point. Yeah, just to some extent. I think if you voted for him... I love him, when Republicans disagree. It makes me, <laughs> makes me I think happy, if, you know? I think if you voted for him on what he ran on, I think he's tried to accomplish a lot of those things. Again, I just purely disagree with a lot of the stances he took. But I don't know that I'd be disappointed if I'd supported him. I think he's done a lot of things that he set out to do. Now, I want to change gears quickly because there, there are some other issues on the table that have been really hot in the last few weeks. One of them is, I don't know if you heard about this, gay marriage. The president came out and spoke about his support for marriage equality. Where do you all stand on this issue? I stand firmly in my religious beliefs that marriage is between a man and a woman. However, I do feel that there should be legal, legal rights because it is somewhat of a civil rights issue um, for gays that do want to marry. I think that that should be the case. But me personally, I always fall on my religious beliefs, which is marriage between a man and a woman. Marsha, this is interesting to me because I think uh, many people who identify as Republican talk about moral issues. And those, when they say that, it tends to mean abortion, stem cell research, and gay marriage. But how do Republicans think about these other issues? You know, poverty, that seems to be a moral issue. Crum crumbling schools, those seem to be moral issues as well. 
So why is it that black folk tend to isolate these things as moral issues and not these other things and vote based on those? When you look at a black church, it's very conservative. The values are the same that conservative Republicans or conservative Democrats, anyone, would have. But I think what happened, and I'm a history major, look at where the black community was over 100 years ago. And I think what happened in the, the 1930s, suddenly we got this, I can get something for nothing. And that's when we start with the New Deal. Mm. And that's for the first a Republican switched over to be a Democrat. But Gary, is there any truth to the idea that black folks feel so beholden, and, and I kind of hear you saying this too, Marsha, that, that black folks feel so beholden to the Democratic Party that they won't even consider a Republican idea just because it's coming from a Republican? I do. I think that's a fact. If you just look at the, the number and the percentage of blacks that vote Democrat, you know, to me, it's more of an education issue. It's what Lenny talked about. You know, we need to have the discussion. You know, we need to not, you know, have a party that people look at as just the old white male party. Last question. Do you ever feel disconnected from the community because you're a black Republican. Do you ever feel like you're less authentic because you're a black Republican? Not anymore. Not anymore? Not anymore. When did you get over that? I never had to get over it, but the black community got over my Republican affiliation. I was able to show them that I'm here, I'm one of you, and I care. Ignore the affiliation, look at my heart. Gary, I'm gonna give you the last word. I've had the opposite delightful experience of, of, of being accepted being a black Republican. It's interesting in Chicago, which is very politically charged and, and very Democrat, I think that folks like the idea that I've been able to stand out, state the case, and they know me. You know, they, they know that I have the same values that they do. We may vote different, but at the core, you know, we believe in the same things, you know, and I've been willing to step out and say, but I believe str more strongly in this party, and I think people have accepted me for it. It's been pretty neat. Well, to I my surprise. <laughs> well, I think having you all here has been pretty neat. It's been a great conversation. We'll all find out what's going to happen in November, but I wish you all the best of luck. Guy Rogier, Marsha White, Lenny McAllister, thanks so much for being here. Thanks, Mark. Stay right there. We'll be back with more Our World with Black Enterprise.